Hey y'all, a new day, a new set of verses to finish out Romans 9 with so we can pick up 10 on Monday. Here we go. 20. Who in the world do you think you are to second guess God? Do you for one moment suppose any of us knows enough to call God into question? Clay doesn't talk back to the fingers that mold it, saying, why do you shape me like this? Isn't it obvious that the potter has perfect right to shape one lump of clay into a vase for holding flowers and another into a pot for cooking beans? If God needs one style of pottery, especially designed to show his angry displeasure and another carefully crafted to show his glorious goodness, isn't that all right? Either or both happens to Jews. But it also happens to other people. Hosea put it well. I'll call nobodies and make them somebodies. I'll call the unloved and make them beloved. In the place where they yell out, you're nobody. They're calling you God's loving children. Isaiah maintained the same emphasis. When he said, if each grain of sand on the seashore were numbered, and the sum labeled and the sum labeled chosen of God, they'd be numbers still, not names. Salvation comes by personal selection. God doesn't count us. He calls us by name. Arithmetic is not his focus. Isaiah had looked ahead and spoken the truth. If our powerful God had not provided us a legacy of living children, we would have ended up like ghost towns, like Sodom and Gomorrah. How can we sum this up? All those people who didn't seem interested in what God was doing actually embraced what God was doing as he straightened out their lives. And Israel, who seemed so interested in reading and talking about what God was doing, missed it. How could they miss it? Because instead of trusting God, they took over. They were absorbed in what they themselves were doing. They were so absorbed in their God projects that they didn't notice God right in front of them. And it makes me think back to another verse where Jesus talks about being a stone that you will stumble over if you're on that path, but if you're looking for him, you, you know what I mean? Like that kind of need not to focus on what we're doing, but being, just to exist with him. You know, because we, we have this world that says, oh, you're nobody of this or that or the other, and Hosea is saying no. If somebody's calling you a nobody, they're actually calling you God's children. That God doesn't, you know, to use the Christian bumper stickerism, ease, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. And it's about relationship. The beauty of God knowing the number of hairs on our head isn't the impressive arithmetic of knowing the number of hairs. Anybody with enough patience can do that. It's knowing us so intimately and caring about us so deeply that even that would matter. Something that most people would find trivial and quite taxing to do, potentially. He knows because he cares for us that much. So I love that, you know, yes, there is the question of, well, who are you to call? You know, and it's very reminiscent of Job, where Job finally gets to the point of like, okay, God, I want an answer. And God doesn't really answer him or full out admonish him in a way. He more takes him through all of the different things that God does, you know, reproduction cycles of different animals to the far reaches of the earth and basically says, I do all of this. Do you think you could do it for a day, for a moment kind of thing? To have the monumental weight of everything that God keeps balanced and then go, I know it seems like a lot what you're dealing with. Compared to what I'm dealing with, it's not. But I'm not here to compare. I'm here to love you. You just have to trust me when I say I love you. And that's part of that relationship. Part of that deep connection of drawing close to each other, of digging in. So as we approach Resurrection Sunday tomorrow, enjoying not only his saving grace, the beautiful day, the hope, the faith, the glory that just God shines, that he rose that we may be with the Father, just the beauty of it, the phenomenal weight. Embrace the fact that God does not need you to do anything for it, you just need to receive. You don't need to do anything, just simply be. I look forward to Monday, starting Romans 10. See you guys then. 
Man, happy Resurrection Day or happy Easter, pick your term. We'll see you guys then. God bless.